Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon, and this week is October 9th through the 15th of the Come Follow Me program associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It is the year 2023, and so we are studying the New Testament. Now, for this particular week in Come Follow Me, we are studying two letters that Paul wrote to the Philippians and the Colossians. But I want to talk about the letter to the Philippians, because as I read it, it actually became one of my new favorites in the New Testament. So as I was thinking, as I was reading this letter, I was picturing Paul writing it as he was sitting in prison. And there are multiple times throughout the entire letter where Paul gives very short but very meaningful testimonies of Jesus Christ, very fervent testimonies of Christ and what Christ can do. And I want to read some of these short testimonies. There's a few different verses, so I'm going to be reading it off my computer today instead of my scriptures, just because I can find them all in one place if it's on my computer. So just a couple of these verses. Philippians 1 verse 12 But I would that you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So in this verse, Paul is saying, all of these things that are happening to me, even the bad things, these have actually all worked to further the gospel. When he's talking in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 8, he says, What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. So he's saying all of these things that I've sacrificed and suffered, they're nothing to me compared to this knowledge that I have of Jesus Christ and what it means to me. A couple more. Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So that first phrase, be careful for nothing, (laughs) when you look it up in the footnotes, it's a lot less confusing. Basically what it's saying is don't have undue concern for anything that's not really necessary, right? Pray and supplicate with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, when you're able to talk to him and you're able to let go of some of those concerns, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will come to you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now, these are all really big ideas in these testimonies, right? They're very general. And sometimes I think it's hard to step into these same feelings that Paul is experiencing as he is expressing these sentiments. It can be hard when life is just kind of passing you by to really garner these intense emotions and when life is actually very difficult it can be hard to feel like you relate to Paul's feelings. Now when I think about Paul and the fact that he was giving these really strong testimonies and he had these really really strong feelings Even as he sat in prison, I actually think that these strong feelings came about because of his testifying, because of his testifying. He wasn't experiencing these feelings and then testifying of them, though that probably sometimes happened. But I believe that as he was testifying, these feelings were coming to him. He was a missionary, so he's testifying all the time. He was writing these letters, and so he was reflecting on it all the time. And I believe that it was all of these testimonies that he was giving. I believe that they dramatically affected his attitude towards his life experiences. Now, I could be totally wrong about this. (laughs) I did not sit with Paul while he was in prison, and so I don't really know. But I sometimes wonder if Paul had his own moments of weakness. I wonder if even though he had a testimony of Jesus Christ and he had seen Jesus Christ and all that Jesus Christ could do and he had witnessed so many miracles, I wonder that even though he knew Christ was with him, if he still sometimes felt overwhelmed by darkness and opposition. 
when I personally picture Paul in prison, I do picture him with these moments of weakness. I picture him <clears throat> occasionally wanting to escape from it all, to finally just be called home or something, to be able to receive a break from it all. And I wonder, as I picture Paul having these difficult experiences, I wonder if he also changed as he wrote these testimonies down. So as he is feeling the struggle and he's having a hard time, <clears throat> and as nice it, was, it would probably be to confide in someone if you're struggling, I wonder if Paul also simultaneously felt the weight and responsibility of writing to his converts. I wonder if he understood the power that his letters were going to have over his over his converts, right? They're writing to him and hard things are happening and he has hard things happening to him, but he is like, you know what? They need a testimony right now. They don't need to hear about my problems. What they really need is a testimony. And so he did. That's what he did. He testified. He gave them what they needed. He chose to bless them. And I wonder if it was in that choice of choosing to testify to them that he changed, that he was able to find himself out of moments of darkness. Even if he knew that Christ never left him, even if he had a testimony of Jesus Christ and who Jesus Christ was, when he was forced, not forced, but when he needed to write these letters to his converts, he had to personally reflect on and testify of Jesus Christ to them. That was what they needed. And as he did that, he was able to remember. <laughs> he was able to remember mortality and what it really was. He was able to remember eternity and what eternity really was. He was able to look at his past and reflect on all of the times that Christ had loved him, protected him, taken care of him, enabled him to do incredible miracles. And I wonder if, as he wrote his testimony for the sake of his converts, if he was able to remember all of the things that he had gained because of Jesus Christ. And if it was in these reflections and these testimonies that he changed that he felt better. Now, I could be totally wrong. <laughs> Maybe Paul never paused in his rejoicings in Christ. Maybe he never had moments of weakness or darkness by this point in his ministry. Maybe I am just projecting my own issues onto him. <laughs> but I also know that there's plenty of other people that have my issues. <laughs> and so regardless of whether Paul was having this specific experience in prison. I still believe that it was because of his frequent opportunities to testify that he personally grew into these feelings. It was his constant need to testify and teach and testify and teach that brought him to the point where he was able to build this kind of faith. I believe these things. <laughs> because of my own personal experience. As I have worked on this blog and this YouTube channel and podcast over the past three years, three years and some odd months, I have had plenty of moments of darkness. There, my feelings have ranged. <laughs> Everywhere from, I have no idea what we're going to do, to there's no way that we can do this. We've experienced betrayal and job loss, job insecurity, uncertainty, depression, sickness. We have experienced immense amounts of stress where we felt like we would never be able to bring our heads above the surface again. And I don't bring these things up to pull out sympathy. I bring these things up because I know that we're not alone in it. I know that my family is not the only one that has experienced despair or discouragement or frightening uncertainties and insecurities. 
perhaps you are feeling this way right now. But in the midst of experiencing all these different forms of darkness, I have also had to work every single week to write my testimony of Jesus Christ. So because I felt like this was something that I was supposed to be doing, I felt like it was something that the Lord expected me to do. <laughs> I felt like I had to. <laughs> and so every single week, I was working to try and write my testimony of Jesus Christ. And it changed me. When it felt like my family was facing mountains that were going to crush us rather than us walking up them and being strengthened by them, I would have to reflect on my life. <laughs> I would have to reflect on my experiences and past mountains that I've had to climb because I had to write about them, <laughs> right? And I would feel prompted by the Spirit to remember certain things to write about or to write about how these things had furthered the gospel or how they had furthered me as a person in my own personal plan of salvation or my family. And I would be able to see the truth, right? Just like how Paul said in Philippians 1, 12. When I would be tempted to wallow in my sacrifices <laughs> when I needed to when I did need to work on <laughs> my blog or editing or whatever it might be instead of napping or watching a show with my husband <laughs> or when they were bigger sacrifices like I felt like I wasn't devoting all the time I wanted to to my kids when I was wallowing in my sacrifices <laughs> I would be trying to write about Jesus Christ and I would have to think about all the things that the gospel had given me and I would find myself immensely humbled. Immensely humbled. <laughs> that all the things that I had sacrificed were actually making me better. Even the things when I felt like I wasn't being the best mom I could be that as I grew in my testimony of Jesus Christ, I would be able to bless my children more. Just like in Philippians 3, verses 7 through 8. When I felt really overwhelmed, either by flaws <laughs> or to-do lists or whatever it was, when I felt extremely overwhelmed, one of the biggest lessons that I have learned with this blog is to not give undue concern things, undue concern to things that don't matter or to things that the Lord will help me with. As I have had to wade through regular, regular life on top of trying to be responsible for these posts, I have felt the Lord promise me over and over and over and over again <laughs> that it would work out and I've seen him follow through over and over and over and over again. And beyond that, even though he's done it so many times <laughs> over the course of three years, he's still kind enough to remind me again when I'm struggling again and I'm getting overwhelmed again. He's kind enough to remind me again <laughs> that I don't have to be concerned that he'll take care of it to just do my best and he will make it work out. <laughs> Even if it's not perfect. <laughs> just like in Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven. As I have found myself having to walk through trials with my family, I have once again, I've had to look back on the ways that the Lord has helped me be successful in the past. <laughs> and in many cases, I find myself feeling like David facing Goliath, right? He's facing this really big man, but he's already fought a lion and bear. So what's some big guy, <laughs> right? 
as I've been forced or required as I've tried writing these things, as I've had to look back on ways that the Lord has helped me before and so that I could write about them and testify about them. I've been able to look forward at things that I have to face and I can know, and I know that the Lord, that I can do all things through the Lord who strengtheneth me. Philippians 4.13. I remember at different points in my life, praying and telling, telling my Heavenly Father that I wanted a personal relationship with him. Telling him that I didn't want to just read about him and bear my testimony about him, but that I wanted to feel the reality of the relationship that I had with him, even if I couldn't remember my pre-mortal life. I wanted to be able to feel him as my Savior and as my brother and as my friend. And I believe that this blog that I, that I feel like he prompted me to do in this YouTube channel have come as an answer to that prayer. I have never been closer to my Savior than I have over the past three years, not even on my mission. And I think that's because I testified a lot on my mission <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's all you do. But I have been forced to, relatively forced, forced, I have been required to testify to the Savior in the context of my regular life. And so as I'm facing regular life problems, I have had to testify of the Savior. <laughs> and as I have practiced testifying in this blog and on my YouTube channel, I have seen how it has expanded to other parts of my life. Not only do I find myself testifying in posts, but as I'm praying to my Heavenly Father, I will be telling Him and laying out all the things that I'm concerned about and laying out my stress and being very open with Him about my weaknesses and being stressed. But then I also find myself telling the Lord that I know he can help me because I do know that now because I've had to testify and remember it so many times. As I write my journal, I find myself writing about my problems and it just naturally starts to drift into, I know the Lord can help me. And I know that you don't have to have a blog. <laughs> in order to experience these feelings that Paul experienced. It pushed me, <laughs> having to do this every single week has pushed me so dramatically. But I know that that is not required in order to experience what Paul experienced and to feel the faith that Paul feels. It Testifying <laughs> can strengthen our faith and it can happen in so many different ways in our callings, finding every opportunity we have in our callings to testify, in our personal relationships when someone is struggling to testify of Christ and all that awaits us. If you write in a journal, <laughs> in your prayers, it can be as simple as affirmations in your own mind when you feel yourself starting to get overwhelmed or worried or anxious to remind yourself and to tell yourself, I know the Lord can help me. I know the Lord can help me just over, over, over and over in your own mind. In fact, there's a quote by Gordon B. Hinckley that I absolutely love. This is what he says. He said, it all works out. Don't worry. I say that to myself every morning. If you do your best, it will all work out. Put your trust in God and move forward with faith and confidence in the future. The Lord will not forsake us. I know that you are, if you are in the midst of any kind of darkness, any kind of darkness, even the kinds that I haven't personally experienced, <laughs> any kinds of darkness, whether it is 
trials that come from circumstances beyond your control or trials that come because of people who are doing wrong things to you. I know if it's darkness because of wrong things that you have done or because you have flaws. I know that as we practice reflecting on and testifying of Jesus Christ, we change. I have a huge testimony of testimonies <laughs> that they remind us of the truth of things, of the truth that our Savior loves us. He wants to help us. He wants to. He has every desire to help us become everything that we are meant to become and that he has the power to accomplish it. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.